Vatican City is an interesting place. It's not a democracy. Its population is below 500, yet it's an independent state. How did that happen? That's what I want to know. Something else I want to know. Why does the Vatican own Europe's biggest gay bathhouse? Vatican City is a theocratic absolute monarchy, with the Pope being their head of state. It's the heart of the Catholic Church, and that's why Vatican City has historically been independent. Even kings and emperors were submissive to the Pope. Until quite recently, religion was more important than militaristic power, so neighboring countries would not invade Vatican City for fear of going to hell. The city was annexed by the Italian king in 1870, but was granted independence in 1929 and has been that way since. Before its annexation, the Pope actually had his own country, which he ruled over from the Vatican. So that's how it became an independent theocratic city-state. That's one question done, let's move on to the other. The Catholic Church does, of course, discourage homosexuality. So if any Vatican officials were to engage in homosexual acts, that would be a big deal. It would be major hypocrisy. Well, the biggest gay bathhouse in Europe is owned by the Vatican. They bought it in 2008 for 30 million dollars. I'll say that again just to be clear. The Vatican spent 30 million dollars so they could own a massive gay bathhouse. They tried to keep it secret but the story emerged a few years ago and became a big scandal. Some church officials do live in the same building as the bathhouse and that was their excuse for buying it. So that's interesting. Here's something weird. Vatican City has no official language, but its government did have one until quite recently. It was Latin. The Pope got rid of Latin two years ago, which probably makes sense. I thought it was a dead language. Speaking of the dead, the Vatican employ their own exorcists. Their chief exorcist recently passed away, and apparently he exorcised 70,000 demons during his career. He first achieved fame when he said yoga was evil and that Harry Potter promoted black magic. But they're not all insane with one warning against beautiful young vampires. He said that Hollywood depictions of vampires are leading young people to the devil. I'm not trying to offend any Catholics here, I'm just giving the facts. It just so happens the facts are really strange. William Friedkin directed The Exorcist. He claims the Vatican recently invited him to film a real exorcism. He agreed to see it, and later said it was remarkably like the one in his film. Here's something about Vatican City which isn't creepy or mental. The Pope has his own secret escape passage. You may already know that if you've seen my video on Hidden Rooms, which at this point is an Escafi classic. The secret tunnel leads from Vatican City to a mausoleum in Rome. Several popes have used it to escape danger. It runs along the Vatican City wall disguised as part of it. According to local legend, anyone who runs through the passage 77 times will gain superhuman strength. Even if true, that would be nothing compared to what's inside the secret Vatican archives. Maybe I'll do an episode in this series just on that. I'll need some time for research though, because I've basically just covered everything I know about Vatican City. By the way, Vatican City isn't even a city. Only 450 people live there. It's more like a district of a non-existent town. That there is a great need today of an education of the heart and of the will as well as, the, as of the mind and of the intellect.